welcome. This is chapter seven for AP Statistics video number one. And today we're going to start talking about bivariate data, data that occurs in uh, pairs. You're going to have two measures for each individual. So today in chapter seven, we're going to talk about scatter plots, association, and correlation. Looking at scatter plots, scatter plots may be the most common and most effective display for data. In a scatter plot, you can see patterns, trends, relationships, and even the occasional extraordinary value sitting apart from the others. Scatter plots are the best way to start observing the relationship and the ideal way to picture associations between two quantitative variables. When looking at scatter plots, we will look for direction, form, strength, and unusual features. So for direction, what we're talking about here is a pattern that runs from the upper left to the lower right is said to have a negative direction. A trend running the other way has a positive direction. So can the NOAA predict where a hurricane will go? So here's a scatter plot. Uh, so we're looking at year and prediction error. The figure shows a negative direction between the year since 1970 and the prediction errors made by NOAA. As the years have passed, the, the predictions have improved. The errors have decreased. So this is a negative association, but it's not a negative thing. It's a good thing. This is something where seeing a negative association makes us happy because we want errors to become smaller and smaller as time goes by. Um, the text, the example in the text shows a negative association between central pressure and maximum wind speed. As the central pressure increases, the maximum wind speed decreases. The next thing we look at is form. If there is a straight line linear relationship, it will appear as a cloud or swarm of points stretched out in a generally consistent straight form. If the relationship isn't straight, but curves gently while still increasing or decreasing steadily, we can often find ways to make it more nearly straight. We can often do a transformation on the data. If the relationship curves sharply, the methods of this book cannot help, really help us. It's beyond the scope of this course. Strength. At one extreme, the uh, points appear to follow a single stream whether straight, curved, or bending all over the place. At the other extreme, the points appear as a vague cloud with no discernible trend or pattern. Note, we will quantify the amount of scatter soon. Unusual features. Look for the unexpected. Often the most interesting thing to see in a scatter plot is the thing you never thought to look for. One example of such a surprise is an outlier standing away from the overall pattern of the scatter plot. Clusters or subgroups should also raise questions. Roles for the variables. It's important to determine which of the two quantitative variables goes on the x-axis and which on the y-axis. This determination is made based on the roles played by the variables. When the roles are clear, the explanatory or predictive variable goes on the x-axis and the response variable, variable of interest, goes on the y-axis. The roles that we choose for the variable are more about how we think about them rather than about the variables themselves. Just placing a variable on the x-axis doesn't necessarily mean that it explains or predicts anything, and the variable on the y-axis may not respond to it in, in any way. Correlation. Data collected from students in statistics classes include their heights in inches and weights in pounds. Here we see a positive association in a fairly straight form, although there seems to be a high outlier. Okay, we've got someone there around 71 inches that, that weighs more than what we would um, expect from the general trend there. How strong is the association between weight and height of statistics students? If we had to put a number on the strength, we would not want it to, be, to depend on the units we used. A scatter plots of heights and centimeters and weights and kilograms doesn't change the shape of the pattern. You can see there we, we rescaled according to the um, 
the new units, but the overall pattern seems the same. Since the units don't matter, why not remove them all together? We could standardize both variables, you know, find the z-score, and write the coordinates of a point as the z-score for the x value and a z-score for the y value. Okay, remember that takes away all the units um, when you standardize. Here is a scatter plot of the standardized weights and heights. Note that the underlying linear pattern seems steeper in the standardized plot than in the original plot. That's because we made the scales of the axes the same. Equal scaling gives a neutral way of drawing the scatter plot and a fairer impression of the strength of the association. Some points, those in green, strengthen the impression of a positive association between height and weight. Other points, those in red, tend to weaken the positive association because they tend to run the other direction. Points with uh, z-scores of zero, those in blue, don't vote either way. The correlation coefficient r gives us a numerical measurement of the strength of the linear relationship between the explanatory and response variables. For the student's heights and weights, the correlation is 0 0.644. What does this mean in terms of strength? We'll address this shortly. Correlation measures the strength of the linear association between two quantitative variables. Before you use correlation, you must check several conditions. The quantitative variables conditions, the straight enough condition, and the outlier condition. The quantitative variables condition is a condition that states correlation applies only to quantitative variables. Don't apply correlation to categorical data masquerading as quantitative. Check that you know the variables, units, and what they measure. Make sure you've got quantitative data. Now, I do want to say, you will hear people in everyday language talk about the correlation between um, two variables, and it may be that neither one of them is um, quantitative. They may um, both be categorical. And you have to understand that in everyday language, association and correlation are used as synonyms, but that's not true in statistics. In statistics, correlation is a very specific kind of association. Okay, association is the broad term. Correlation in statistics means a linear, refers to the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Okay, so you don't want to go around correcting everybody because in everyday language it's okay to talk about the um, correlation between, you know, I don't know, uh, the correlation between um, political party affiliation and um, favorite um, news channel to watch on TV. Okay, that's fine for everyday language. In statistics, we would not refer to that as a correlation. We would talk about that as an association because neither one of those variables, political party affiliation and uh, favorite news channel, neither one of those would be quantitative. So it wouldn't be relevant in the discussion of correlation in statistics. Okay, straight enough condition. You can calculate a correlation coefficient for any pair of actually quantitative variables, it should say there, but correlation measures the strength only of the linear association and will be misleading if the relationship is not linear. Okay, so the, the establishment of a linear relationship needs to um, um, occur before you start calculating correlations. Outlier condition. Outliers can distort the correlation dramatically. An outlier can make an otherwise small correlation look big, or it can hide a large correlation. It can even give an otherwise positive association a negative correlation coefficient and vice versa. When you see an outlier, it's often a good idea to report the correlations with and without that point, with and without the, the outlier. Okay, this is going to conclude video one. We're going to come back and finish up the rest of this lesson in video two, so I'll see you in just a minute.